Simplicity Tips Ministry, bringing you the Word of God with simplicity and understanding. One word from God is all you need to turn your life around. Listen and be blessed. Whenever a marriage collapses, whenever a family collapses, most of the time you never find God blaming the woman. In very few occasions he does that. Very few. Most of the time the person he holds responsible is a man. Why? The man is the foundation. Now, see the point. God created the woman in the man. What he did after was to separate her out. So the man is the foundation. Looking at the fall of the first family, if Eve fell and Adam didn't, it wouldn't have affected anything. That's why the church today was a fallen church. But Christ didn't fall. That's why everything was saved. But if Christ falls, if the foundation falls, Adam falls, and Eve was not, you know what happens? Everything goes wrong. When Satan tempted Eve, Satan was not interested in Eve. Satan's target was Adam. But according to the principle of influence, Satan knew that the access to Adam was Eve. And that becomes a message to the woman. No matter what goes wrong, no matter the attack Satan brings on you, no matter what goes wrong, if you let the devil assess your man, the institution is messed up. If he can stand, the whole thing can be rebuilt. Of course, I don't know. I'm teaching principles and even the things I teach you can compare with a lot of other scriptures. I hope you know that if the foundation be destroyed, there is nothing else the righteous can do, even with his righteousness. So put it, the Bible said, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the male man is destroyed, what can the woman do? Even if she is righteous. The foundation. You know, that, what is the foundation of the human body? The skeleton. If you break the bones, it doesn't matter how fine you look. Everything will go wrong. So, the first person to take responsibility in this issue called marriage, or whether it succeeds or fails, is the man. That's why, ladies, you should be careful about marrying a man that is not mature, that is a baby Christian and all that. Because if you think you like him, wait for him. Give another year. Let him grow up. Tell him to start going for foundation. The prayer life of the family, the word life of the family, everything. Sometimes a woman might be a little more spiritual, you know, more mature than the man, but you have to allow him to grow up. If you don't, if you don't, it will affect everything. And you end up bringing down your own spiritual life. Men should not take their role lightly. Let's define the five roles of each party in the relationship. The man has five roles. The woman also has five roles. So God laid the foundation of the family with the male man. In chapter 1, you should have seen that where he created the male man but put inside him the female man. And so in chapter 2, he separated her. So that thing God took was not just a rib. There is already a quality, a feminine quality in, in Adam's spirit that he separated out. Male and female created Edom. That's Genesis 1. So one man just like God, but God is a mother and a father. But finally God separated out the feminine qualities. The foundation is a man. So when that man fell, both women fell in him. Everybody fell. And I think I want to say this about this foundational thing. The woman never gives life to the children. Never. The seed, the life-giving seed comes from the man. Never. That's why you will never see in the Bible the sins of the mothers. If there is idolatry, for example, you hear that the sins of the fathers will come upon the children to the fourth generation. So if you are suffering from generational things, stop thinking about your mother. Look at your father. If your mother's whatever is activated is because your father's covering did not work. If the man was strong, was in touch with God, all the causes the woman brought would have been destroyed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't think you are hearing it. You know, we're talking from the spiritual angle. I'm not talking about nurture. You know, because if she learns some bad character, she can keep doing that one. That is nurture. But I'm talking about nature, what she got. If the man, which is a covering, remain the covering, he will have shielded out every other force from operating. The problem is, when the man is an Ahab, then Jezebel imports demons from, from uh, whatever, and I'm bringing Baal into the family. Because he is not a man, he's a woman ruling. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay. Let's get into the rules. The masculine responsibilities. Because that's the number one. The first rule of the man in the home is leadership. And leadership does not mean boss. Because that's what a lot of people think. It doesn't mean boss. It means a responsible one. Leadership means the one who has authority. But the one who has authority is the one who has responsibility. Don't ever forget that. Most people think authority without thinking responsibility. Authority is the ability to discharge responsibility. And it also means that you are the one to be held accountable. That's why you didn't hear God saying, Eve, where art thou? Who was he holding responsible? It was Adam. If these principles are not true, then God will not have punished Adam or held him responsible. He should have held Eve. Of course, like I said, that once the, the head collapses, the whole system will suffer. Eve had also her own consequences. But that would not have happened if, if, if the foundation was not destroyed. I sometimes say this way that uh, the first Adam fell with his wife but the last Adam, you know, the first Adam died with his wife. He fell with his wife, died with his wife. But the last Adam died for his wife. And that's what the Bible said men should do. Be willing to lay down their life for. That's where she is not all right, you take responsibility and make things right. It doesn't mean lord, lordship. It doesn't mean the one who suppresses the other. And I want you to write this down. When God made them Adam and Eve, male and female, he didn't make them, you know, king and maid, leader and servant. He made them king and queen, father and mother. That's why he said children, honor your parents, not your father, not your mother, two of them. They are the leaders. Two of them are leaders. So one is just assisting the other in leadership. But two of them are in leadership. Just like saying the president and the vice president. Two of them are leaders of the nation. But in authority, one comes before the other. Because wherever you have more than one person, there has to be the first person to be held responsible. If something goes wrong with Nigeria, you don't call it Atiku. You say Obasanjo's administration. Atiku can still come back and win the next election. But Obasanjo's name will be going. Why? He is the responsible man. And he is the one to account for what goes on with this nation. Number two, it doesn't mean better. It just means different. They have different roles and different responsibilities and because of that it affects their function. I'll give you an example. In flight, in a plane, you have a pilot, then you have a co-pilot. But usually one is responsible, then the other assists him. Now, but the decision, the final decision, because there could be disagreements, the responsible person finally vetoes. It doesn't mean he's trying to overrule or, or suppress. No, because they are, somebody has to make the decision, but he has to also take responsibility for the outcome. I, I, I don't think we sometimes understand responsibility. Don't you understand things like flight? rules and regulations and the same thing that applies to sheep and captains if a ship sinks the last person to leave is the captain if he's sinking he has to stand there he has to stand there and get everybody to the self joint before he leaves if he gets out before the last two people drowns he's prosecuted that's how it is with marriage so if there's anybody to stand and make sure and all that it is the man. And actually, the court seems to have the idea that it is women that divorce men. And most of the principles and teachings about divorce seems to have it the idea that it is women that divorce men. But Moses gave men one kind of right. He said if you finish after the wedding, you don't like her anymore, give her a certificate of divorce. That's what Jesus was trying to put back in shape. He said that was not God's plan. So 
So I can give you an example to that. You know, the children of Israel also wanted their way. They wanted a God they could see. And Aaron asked them for their, and gave them something. But that was not God's plan. These are the gods that brought you out. Okay. The man's responsibility is leadership. Number two, based on that, he has to provide vision and direction. That's the job of leadership. To provide vision and direction. The second responsibility of the man is to provide affection. Don't expect love for your wife. Give it first, then it will come. Most of the problem in a woman's life can be cured if the man does this job. Love. Love her. Provide affection. Number three, prov provision. That provides supplies. Finances. God, wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. You mark that word as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. So the first job of the man is leadership. Leadership. So he says the reason is because he is the leader. He is the leader. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Notice the word headship. 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 Headship, headship. Hold that place because I want to give you just a scripture to think about. First Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 3. I will have you to know that the head of every man is Christ. Head. The head of the woman is the man. The head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonored his head. But every woman praying or prophesying with her head uncovered dishonored her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. You see all this head, head, head. Dishonored her head. It's not about your skull and the hair on it. It's about her husband. How a woman can uncover her husband. That's what he's discussing there. We are looking at the rules. Wives, submit to your own husband as unto the Lord. The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And people should mark that word, in everything. Anyway, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So the kind of love here is more than I love you kind of talks. Even though it should be there. is the type that is ready to sacrifice himself for her sake. Sacrifice. Paul gave one scripture, which one injunction, which if any couple obey it, marriage problem ends. You know what it is? Is a being not desirous of vain glory, that is selfish, but in honor, preferring one another. That's what love does. Love prefers. In honor, preferring one another. <laughs> Just that thing, destroy selfishness and then be the giver. Problem ends. Destroy selfishness, that's the first thing he said there. Then the second thing, be the one that preferred the other. If they if, 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 if two of you have a need but it's only one person that the need can be made for let the man prefer that the wife will get it there are two beds in the house uh, there, uh, uh, there is one bed in the house it cannot take two people who should sleep on the floor is a man this is the love he's talking about the practical love the one who is ready to die for the other it's not love of a uh, Baby, uh, man, you turn my head around. You know, uh, all this kind of thing. Read First Corinthians 13. You see, when God says love, what he means. The first thing there is love is patient. Love is kind. And 
and he keeps listing them. Who should be the first to show kindness? The man. Should be the first to be patient? The man. And all that. So, okay. The husband. So he said, husband, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, and gave himself for it. Everyone should mark that word, gave himself for it. That is even to the point of losing his life. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Then verse 27, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any sort of but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. A man wrote a book, Doing Myself a Favor, Loving My Wife. Anyway, verse 29, No man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished. So, the third responsibility of the man is nourishing. That is providing, providing. Her hair is scattered, pay for the saloon. She dress haggardly, buy the clothes. Nourishing, 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 nourishing. You know how you water a garden. That means she should not look worse than she was in her father's house in your hand. It's very simple. If you want to know how good a man is, look at the lady. He's married. Forget what they do in the public. Nourish, nourish, nourish. You go to a garden and uproot a flower or a plant and you come to your house and plant it. That's what you've done by marrying her. But after two weeks, one more year, one month, what, how does a flower look? It should grow better, more robust than it was in the father's house. Nourishing. Then because I jumped one responsibility, I will go back to it before I finish. The other responsibility of the man is to provide spiritual covering. That's provide spiritual everything, which starts with providing the word, providing teaching, providing spiritual direction. Look at it there. Verse 25, husband love your wife, even as Christ love the church and give himself for it. Verse 26, see it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the blood. So the point here is that nobody marries a woman perfect, but you end up producing what you want out of her. See the point there. Jesus didn't marry the church perfect, but cleansed her to his own test. And how does he do it? By the washing of the water, by the word. So a man's responsibility, fourth responsibility in the house, is to provide the word of God. That is why he should be matured. Provide spiritual. So Adam should have taught Eve not to eat the tree. It's not the job of God. It's the job of the man. That's why I say the first church is a house and the man is a pastor. The wife is the assistant pastor. The children are church members with the maids. So you, you give your first daughter Osha. Chief Osha, the other one music minister, and the other one financial, you know, just divided, that is church. And the real church, which is the body of Christ, should begin with a house church, that is cell group. Until you can pastor a cell church, a house church, you can pastor a big church. Because a church is made up of little, little families. So, see it there. See it there. The job of Providing the word, enlightenment, which is what clean says. Jesus said, Thou art made clean by the word which I have spoken unto you. That is where the character of the woman will now grow. Don't keep trying to change a woman. No. Just make the word of God clear. And there, is a, there are two ways. Though. I'm not talking about preaching at her. Or preaching at your husband. As somebody has not given you money for food, you wait till morning devotion. I had an auntie that does that. I was told that come to her house, so she just wait. Morning devotion time. Mm. Okay. If anyone does not provide for his worse than an infidel. Hey, hey, He's sharing. No, there is no woman okay here to tell. It's the children and the husband. And the husband. <laughs> 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 
Today, let us pray. Kachukunyu muoke mba wobi. Everywhere. The man will get up and walk out and walk into his room. If he stopped attending the morning devotion. From there, he's already coming back late. That is called witchcraft. Uh, yes. The only scripture you know to read is wives submit to your husband. Every morning you will read it. Like children, parents who are trying to manipulate their kids. The only scripture they read is children obey your parents and the Lord. You have not taught them how to read their books and pass. You have not seen the other places about taking them out and buying them something. If you bring those ones, with the day you talk about submit, they will hear it. But if submit is the only thing, they will resent God's wisdom. They think God is a tyrant. It is something, if a man is not providing love and all that, and is always talking only about, it will only be provoking rebellion. And if a woman is not submitting, and you are talking about, eh, after all, today, yes, I have something to share in the morning devotion. Do you know, to be honest with you, since we got married, till this time we are planning to do this, because we did some studies together along some of these line responsibilities, we have never had any discussion in our morning devotion about these roles. I'm not saying it cannot be studied. We can decide to study it. Let's really study our role so that, you know, maybe where I'm not doing well, the word of God can enlighten me and if there's an area. And we look at it and each person is looking for his own side. That's the way to study the word. <laughs> so the man should be the priest, the prophet, and the teacher in the house. That is spiritual. Take up his spiritual responsibility. Now what happens where your man is a baby Christian, if you have not married him, wait. Allow him some months to grow. Push him into all kinds of activities that will grow him. One thing about women is this. You may be very fast like flowers, but men too, when they start to overtake. History has proven it, even the scripture. Odiomi's wife was the one doing the ministry when the man caught. overtook the woman in a few weeks. Smith Wiggle's wife, it was a wife that was doing everything, praying and getting all the beating and all the harassment, being locked out. The man just caught in few weeks. Because when men commit, they go all the way. Women have a way, you know. When we study differences, you see a few things. You see why it's like that. So, you just pray for him, encourage him and all that. If he's not growing, you know, you're going to have problem. Because submitting to a man who doesn't submit to God is a problem. God gave submission because he knew that the man he is telling you to submit to should be submitted to him. That means he has control. But to submit to a man who doesn't submit to God is not an easy thing. And so when you put yourself in that predicament, you know you have entered it. Amen. At the last assignment of the man, verse 29, for no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. That is cherishing, 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 cherishing. I want to use another scripture to define it further. Just read for me the man's responsibility. Start from there, where I started. Read it in that your translation there. I give you the woman's role, and we we'll go. Verse 25. Yes. And you husbands, show the same kind of love to your wives as Christ showed to the church when he died for her, to make her holy and clean, washed by baptism and God's word, so that he could give her to, him, to himself as a glorious church without single spot or wrinkle or any other blemish, being holy and without a single fault. That is how husbands should treat their wives, loving them as parts of themselves. For since a man and his wife are, are now one, a man is really doing himself a favor and loving himself when he loves his wife. No one hates his own body, but lovingly cares for it, just as Christ cares for his body, the church, of which we are parts. And I think I should make a statement, the easiest way to hell is not the devil. 
is hating your wife or maltreating her. If you want naked hellfire, don't tell me she's Jezebel. Love her out of Jezebel spirit and teach her. Bring the word. The Bible said you cleanse her up and remove the spots and wrinkles and blemishes. Amen. First uh, Peter chapter 3. I promised you an additional scripture on this thing. First Peter chapter 3. Look at verse um, 7. Ye likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. See that word. Part of cherishing. Part of cherishing. Oh, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Now, the, the last responsibility of the man is protection. I think I've mentioned it, so put it down, protection. Now, let's give list the responsibility of the lady. The first ministry of the woman is companionship. Just be his companion. He likes swimming. Learn how to swim. If you can't swim, go there and sit down and watch. If you let another woman become his companion, you have given him another wife. Number two, the second ministry of the woman is helps, helps, help, help him. The truth is that the, you are designed to help him. He has so many visions, has so many things, but he needs the help of a woman. There is something you do that brings out what he has. The third is submission, submission, submission. So if there is a crash, who should pipe low? Is a woman. Is a woman. Now there is a way God also teaches that a lady can can submit and still win. The truth is that you don't bend your man by contending with him. You bend you bend him by submitting to him. Oh yes, and the Bible says do that as the church. Is subject to Christ. Then, if you get down to First Peter chapter three, you see a few other things there, and uh, that will be bringing me very close to conclusion. So, what we study today is called the role of the male and the female in the marriage covenant. The role of the male and the female in the marriage covenant. Look at it. First Peter chapter three. Likewise, you wives being in subjection to your own husband, that is your own, not to another person's husband, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of their wives. Why they behold your chest conversation coupled with fear? Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating of hair, of wearing of gold, of putting on of apparel. Let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husband. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Now the word is not necessarily whether you call the man Lord or not. The word there is honor. Honor him. Men have this ego thing. Just feed it. I don't mean push him into pride. Honor him. You won't have problem. A woman who submits and honors a man has got him. If you want a love portion for the man, that is it. The last responsibility of the woman is domestic. You will see it in Titus chapter 2. If the house is in a mess, it's not the man's problem is a woman's responsibility. That's the Bible. In Proverbs he said, a virtuous woman builds her house, the one that makes her shame tears it down with her own hand. So look at Titus chapter 2 verse 4 that they teach young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keep us at home, keep us at home, keep us at home, good, obedient to their husband, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Read verse 4 and 5 for me. Eric Titus 2 verse 4 and 5. Yes. Titus 2 verse 4 and 5. Verse 4. These older women 
must train the younger women to live quietly, to love their husbands and their children, and to be sensible and clean-minded, spending their time in their own homes, being kind and obedient to their husbands, so that the Christian faith can be spoken against by those who know them. Women have domestic responsibilities. Why the man is given the responsibility of being the provider, the woman too should be the homemaker. And all that. Amen. Now there are responsibilities that are shared. Child upbringing, all that and all that. One of the man's responsibility in child upbringing is discipline. Discipline. Why the woman has a nurturing in First Peter chapter three verse seven. Likewise, ye husband dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So get some of this point. The basic cause of marriage problems is always sin. But sin manifests itself in two forms. The first form is erroneous concept. That's wrong concept or ideas. Wrong beliefs or wrong thinking. So sin is not just what you do. It could be what you believe or what you think. The second way is wrong or sinful attitudes or actions. So sinful attitudes or sinful actions they are the two ways sinful, the sinful nature manifests. To, to, to solve marriage problems, we have to be willing to repent of our wrong ideas, change them, and embrace God's ways and principles. Let's assume you believe that, ah, I can't submit to a man. You know, just like, you're, it's a sin first to start with. You have to be willing to humble yourself and repent. And if not, you have laid the foundation for problems. Uh, one more thing I want to say is this from the verse I read disharmony in the home is often the chief cause of disharmony between heaven and the home if you are praying and nothing is happening if your your ministry is drying up and you hear some ministers who tell you after I got married the anointing lifted it's not marriage that killed the anointing it is disharmony that your prayers be not hindered a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Anything that hinders your prayer hinders your power. Anything that hinders your prayer life hinders your productivity. So I said here, ignoring divine order, that is the role of the male and female in the home, will block off that family's access to heaven. When a couple refuses to communicate with each other, God refuses to communicate with any of them. So a couple's relationship with God is often affected by their relationship with each other. And it's very, very important. Amen. The role of the man and the woman is a very important thing. So let me now ask a question. What if the woman makes more money than the man? Maybe she's richer. Is it still the role of the man to provide for his house? Yes. It hasn't changed nothing. Of course, I want to say, categorically clear, that one of the things that caused the fall of the first family is when they exchange roles. Eve became the provider instead of Adam. And the moment she gave him, his authority collapsed. If your wife is a provider in the house, if she is richer, let her bring in. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Men who want to marry with rich women should marry them knowing that they still will hold their own responsibilities. Put food on the table. She can supplement and bring other. It's true that you gave her 5,000 naira to cook and you are sure that money will provide food but at the end of the day you got a cow leg. And you should be able to say thank you very much. You gave money for one pound of meat but ended up eating chicken. I have to give her extra hug and thank her for it. Amen. Any question? Two, three. We close. Yes? Praise God. On this issue of the roles not being exchanged, 
so that um, there will not be problem in the family. What about the situation whereby the man is irresponsible? Um, like maybe thorough investigations we are not done, or even though it was done at a point in time, the man decided to have bad friends and to change and things like that. And he doesn't care about the kids, he doesn't care about prayers and things like that. What is the woman supposed to do? She should obey, obey the principles in First Peter chapter 3. She can only change him by changing herself more. Cultivating those characters, spirit, uh, the uh, principles of a meek and quiet spirit. And the Bible says he will be changed by the conversation, the lifestyle of the wife. But there is nothing else she can do. People can still correct their mistakes. Where the mistake is already made, the man is irresponsible, you're already married. There's nothing you can do. You have to live in a married life. You communicate and talk and see if things can get better, but not nag. Uh -huh. But if, you know, sometimes people don't change overnight like that. You have to pray for him and trust God to work out something. There's not much you can do, but if he's somebody you have not married, to marry an irresponsible man, when we have thought today that the failure or success of marriage depends on the man more, more than it depends on the woman. It's a serious thing. Why the atmosphere of the home depends on the woman more than it depends on the man? The temperature of the home is set by the woman, not the man. But the success of the institution depends on the man. If you walk into a house, there is tension. Check the wife. If you walk into a house, it's not inviting. You can't relax. There is no love. Check the woman. The temperature of the home is set by the woman. But the success of the marriage. If a man is saying, I cannot go home, it's because of, he has a tiger in the, in the house. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So that's why the teachings are important, so that it opens the eyes of the person. Amen, amen, amen. You know, I said this is the first institution. God created marriage many years before. Actually, about, about 4,000 years before he created the church. Think about it. Marriage is at least 4,000 years older than the church. God created marriage before he created the bank. Amen. Praise God. Uh, is it good for the man to investigate about her partner before getting married to her? Uh -uh, absolutely. <laughs> if you, you should investigate who you are marrying. I'm telling you. It's not just a suggestion. It's a basics. Yes. You know who you are married. Okay. But if you mean CID kind of investigation, I don't know. You know. But you should know who you are married. Okay. The last question. Praise God. Pastor. Yes. We have heard that we are supposed to love, the man is supposed to love the woman. Yes. And make sacrifices for her. Yes. If need be, pay the utmost sacrifice. Yes. In a situation where this, in doing this, it affects his ability to perform his other responsibilities, which includes providing for the woman and the family, how do you reconcile it? <laughs> Any sacrifice you are making for the woman that will not allow you to put food in her <laughs> is fully sacrifice. You were given a job before you were given a wife. So a man, by nature, is a worker. That's why when you see a man violating that, that first law of nature, you know they say the first law of nature is defense. But for the man, the first law of nature is work. Before defense. After the man was told in Genesis 2 to till and tend the garden there, he was told to protect it. So he's, he was first a cultivator before he became a protector. What will you, will you be protected if there is nothing in the garden? So... If a man violates that first principle, not working, a woman, a wise woman who is taught should not marry that man. And then, after marrying a woman, and I'm going to bet you, believe me, a, a responsible man that is diligent cannot be stopped from his work by love. You know why? When the God commanded you to love your wife, he knows that her security is in her relationship, but your own is not there, your own is in your career. So I don't see love as a reason for not working. Know that the man has been a lazy man. 
Now, I, I don't know what you mean, you know, because if you mean like, can I abandon maybe one or two responsibilities and travel because of my work? Eh, yes, that is love. That's a different thing, but you balance the equation well. So you, you, you don't lose too much money, but it's part of the price we could pay for love. Mm. Okay, let me answer you this question because you're still looking at me as if, Pastor, your answer is not satisfactory. Okay. Songs of Solomon chapter 8 verse 6 this is the final answer this is the Bible set me as a seal upon thy heart as a seal upon thy arm for love is as strong as death you see repeating the fact that one can give his life for this okay watch jealousy is as cruel as the grave the coals thereof are the coals of fire which had the most vehement flame Many waters cannot quench love. Neither can the floods drown it. Now see the answer to your question. If a man will give all the substance, that's wealth, of his house for love, it will utterly be contempt. It will still be like nothing. So your relationship is more important than your business. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. Four things that are more important than relationship. One, is the Holy Spirit. The other is your purpose in life, your calling. Don't abandon it for a woman's sake. Third, your faith, the commitment to Jesus Christ, and the word of God. You know, Adam was so fully that he disobeyed God's word because of the woman, and then he lost everything. But minus that, when you now talk about career, your job, your relationship comes before that, but it's important. Amen. I'm sure you've been blessed by this message. For other inspiring messages by Pastor David Ogwini, contact the Deep's Department of any Dominion City chapter all over the nation or Dominion City, Lagos, 11 stroke 13 Jumat Lukoya off Ogudu Road or Jota, Lagos. Phone number 017926879 or 080-3351-4993, 080-3718-3623 or email ntftapes at yahoo.com.